V with 85th and Weight. Thanks for joining me today. In this episode, we'll talk about my March makes, which wasn't that many, but I am happy with what I was able to complete. So the first one that we'll start off with is the one I'm actually wearing. It's the Annie Cardigan by Mimi G Style. I believe it's So So Death um, brand that this was under. And it is a very nice and um, easy cardigan to complete. And I'll um, pop up some pictures and maybe even some video or something like that of me actually wearing it. So I'm going to have to try to stand up <laughs> right now for you all to figure out how it looks on me. But it's pretty much a cut to front, back on the fold, sleeve with a cuff. And then you have um, a facing placket or whatever this band is called here that goes all the way around. And then a pretty deep hem, which I really liked. Now, this comes, as you'll see, just maybe to my thighs or so um, above my knee. And um, what I'd like to do, and I will make this again, the next time um, that I'll make it, what I'd like to do is actually extend it about six to eight inches so that it'll hit pretty much at my calves. Um, I would just want a longer one. Now the fabric that I used is actually from Joanne Fabrics. This was one of their fall winter 2021 fabrics and it came in a couple of different colorways. I believe it was navy, this pink, a gray, and a white or ivory. And I left up on this pink because by the time I got to the stores and was able to actually purchase it, all the other colorways were pretty much sold out. And even online, they weren't available. So I doubt that they still have any of this on the website. If they do, I will link it below. But it is a very soft, uh, very soft fabric. It's a little thin because this t-shirt that I'm wearing is white and I don't know if you can see it here but I noticed it that you could actually still see it through you know where the sleeve actually stops underneath there so I don't know if it's just because it's a lighter color like the pink and white would do that but maybe not the gray or the navy that it came in. Overall though I do like both the cardigan and the fabric that I use for this. Oh, I forgot to mention too, as you saw, it actually has pockets in it as well. And so I will definitely be making this again. I did not include buttons on this one. I don't know. I guess I'm just really gun shy when it comes to, or trigger shy, gun shy, trigger happy. I don't know. I'm gun shy when it comes to putting on buttons or closures. Because I'm not really sure, you know, like if I want buttons, if I want the toggle like I did on um, another coat that I was thinking about, or if I actually wanted to do a snap or a um, invisible closure of some sort. So I didn't put any closures on this one and I'm actually okay with it. I more than likely won't do it just because I'm in my mind, I'm done with this, <laughs> done with this garment, or at least this version of the garment. However, on my next one, I want to use a, just a material that's a little heavier. So I probably will put closures on that one because I would be wearing it out more often. So I wanted to give it more of a coat versus cardigan feel. But for this one, I will say I am happy with it. Like I said, it was pretty simple to make. Of course, Mimi G has sew-alongs and very detailed instructions to go along with her patterns. And so it was pretty easy to follow and, and to uh, assemble. So if you want it, I'll leave the link in the description below. Um, certainly re uh, go out to her website or the so so death website they may be all combined now i forget <laughs> i've had this for a little while but um it's still available for purchase and so like i said pretty easy beginner friendly in terms of a cardigan sweater so now for the second make i'm not actually going to show me in this make only because it was supposed to be a part of a look for my so frugal 22 now, what I'm showing you here now is not was not a free pattern. It's actually from Seamwork, but the pants or the slacks that I was going to um, put with it 
they were. I'm still putting those together. They're still off to the side for right now. I hopefully will get back to those early May. I doubt that I'll be able to get to them in the month of April, but early May, I'd like to circle back to those and then be able to complete this look. Okay, so what's what's the actual garment? <laughs> okay, so the garment is the Elmira top or wrap top, wrap sweater. And so I'll post some pictures of it as well, but it was, and it's by Seamwork, as I mentioned. Now this top actually has, you know, the front cut twice. You have the back on the fold. You have a sleeve as well as a cuff. And then you have your two ties. And um, those are pretty long. So you still have some draping on the hip. And I did try this on. So you have some draping on the hip to actually see the tie and um, the ends of the tie, you know, kind of um, laying down there. But all in all, I would say, again, another good pattern to consider if you're interested in a wrap top. I've not necessarily um, worn a lot of wraps whether it's a top or it's a dress or it's a sweater or anything like that jacket. Um, I've, I've not necessarily gravitated to those, but I did want to try something different. And like I said, I wanted to go for a look. And so I was quite pleased with how this came out. I really liked the fabric. I didn't have any issues with sewing it up. I actually did um, use my twin needle here on the collar to finish off that back part of the collar on the front it is um, a facing so you don't see any um you know any stitches or anything on the outside but all in all it was a pretty good pretty simple pattern to complete however this this I will say yes is one that um, I would recommend as far as a introduction to wrap tops or just wrap garments period because it seemed rather simple and even with the attaching the actual ties and I have it all um, tied up here but even with uh, attaching the ties to the actual front and back of the garments um, or the front of the garment was was fairly simple as well. So again, hopefully in May sometime you'll see the finished product of the top as well as the slacks that I'm working on to complete this look and I'll get that out just as soon as I can. Okay, so for my third and fourth makes, which were my final makes of the month, these were a part of the So Yellow, hashtag So Yellow for Endo challenge. There were two challenges I wanted to participate in for the month of March, and that would have been the So Yellow for Endo as well as the So Frugal 22. So I wasn't able to finish the So Frugal for 22, but I was able to complete the looks that I had for the So Yellow for Endo. And so for the So Yellow for Endo, I actually made a dress. And I did post pictures of this on Instagram. And it is this yellow dress here. Now, that's the bottom. <laughs> it's this yellow dress here. So this is actually a Berta pattern. It's 6414. And it comes in two views. So you have your shorter view and the longer view, and I did the longer view. And when I first constructed it, I didn't have the tie or the sash that goes with it. And I took some pictures and I really didn't like the way it looked with the um, elasticated waist being exposed like that. So I quick went ahead and added the tie belt. Now, the reason I didn't start with the belt was because this would have been eligible for the Sewing 5 and Below series that uh, Talisha from um, Creativity by T and Rochelle from Rochelle.Handmade.Dyke Designs was, um, had put on for the month of March. But because I added the tie there, it took it over to six pattern pieces. So for this one, you have your front and you have your back and then you have your skirt front and skirt back 
Now, unfortunately, this does not have pockets and I was considering putting pockets in it, but I wanted to just get it done. <laughs> just get it done one in time for the, the So Yellow for Endo Challenge. And then also in case I could, you know, get it for um, Talisha and Rochelle's series, then I wanted to get that included as well. So that's why I didn't. But I will make this dress again and I will be adding pockets. So it has those two and then it has um, the neck band, I believe. Or was this fold over? No, no, it was a neck band. <laughs> and then, yeah, because the sleeves was just a fold over um, and him sleeve. So it does have a neck band. So that would have taken me to the five pieces. And like I said, because I didn't like the way the, the waistband was exposed, I did add the tie or the sash. And so that turned it into six pieces. But this was my first Berta pattern. And I have to say that I went into with a lot of reservations because I've heard, and I don't know if, it, if it's the pattern or if it's the magazine patterns or some other type of way they issue patterns, but it was always, oh, Berta's instructions are just so difficult to follow or they were either minimum or they left stuff out that, you know, thinking everyone should already know. So I was quite hesitant to even jump into any Berta patterns at all. But I figured, you know what, let me just get one or two. And I think I have three. So I have some pants. I have a top, this dress, oh, and then a skirt. So I have a total of four patterns. They were on sale at the time. And I wanted to just see, okay, let me make my way through some of these patterns to see if there's something that, you know, I can... Um, follow along with without too many issues or having to run and look at videos and figure things out. And I will say that this was a fairly easy pattern to complete. It's a part of their easy line. <laughs> so, um, and all four patterns are basically in their easy category. Uh, so, I mean, there wasn't much to putting this together, but you still want some very clear instructions, right? So, um, again, like I said, you have the front and the back that you stitch together. You add this neckline. And this one um, was actually folded over, and I did use a twin needle again. My twin needle had a lot of work <laughs> in the past couple um, of weeks with garments that I finished in March and the ones I'm working on in April. So I think that's a good thing because I do like a um, twin needle finish. Um, so that was pretty simple. The elastic band, the waistband, now let's see if I can get in here pretty quickly. It is one where you sew the, the bodice and the skirt together and that's about a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then what you do is you sew about one eighth from the edge into that seam allowance onto the bodice. And so that creates a casing. Of course, you leave an opening so you can put the elastic in there and then you go ahead and stitch that up, which I really like that because it one has a nice clean finish right on the inside and two, the elastic isn't touching you. This fabric is pretty soft. And so having that double layer on next to the body in between the elastic as well as the, um, you know, between the elastic and the body um, really feels really good on. So now one thing I'll have to say though is I did have to cut the elastic shorter than what the instructions or what the length called for in the um, on the elastic guide. So that's something to consider when you're uh, putting this together, or really any um, pattern that has an elastic waist guide. I often think that they go over just because it's easier to cut down than it is to you know add more. You don't want to waste a lot of material doing that. So um, that's you know, that was fine with me, <laughs> smaller the better. But um, it was just one of those things where, you know, I had to reduce the elastic because it just wasn't gathering like I thought it should on the waist. Um, the skirt, I do like the length of this skirt. And actually it has a slit 
on both sides. And so that was pretty easy to accomplish in terms of you just, um, you know, stitch it up, up the slit, go horizontal at the top and then stitch back down. And then the hem, again, we're using a twin needle to finish out the hem at the bottom. So again, I will be making this dress again. On the envelope, it has both a solid color dress as well as a pattern or printed uh, fabric. And I do like both those lengths. And so I probably will make a shorter version of this and use some type of abstract or printed pattern on fabric when I make the next one. But um, this Berta 6414 is a good pattern in terms of it <laughs> for introduction into Berta. If you're into dresses, into easy patterns, and haven't uh, sewn up a Berta pattern, I would you know strongly recommend going out to get it. Now, I did pick this up I want to say it was this year. It may have been late last year. It certainly wasn't in the summer of last year. So it may have been like late last year. So hopefully it is still in the drawers or on display over at Joanne Fabric or your local fabric shop. So, and if not, it it's definitely still on the website, the simplicity.com website. So again, all in all, like the bird address. Now, in the pictures that I've shown, there's also a blue, there's also a blue bag. So this bag, okay, backstory. So when I first started sewing garments, I was like all up and through my library books because of course this is 2020 and everything was closed and you know, you could certainly still go pick up books from the library, but you couldn't go in and actually browse. And so shout out to the local libraries. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, they were like knowing me every week, every other week of coming to pick up books and take back books. So um, I am a fan of public libraries. So I had been, I had found this book and I mean, I was going through like dozens of books at a time. And it was this one that was like, oh, I really, really like this bag. So I, you know, kind of, I borrowed it and then maybe some months later I borrowed it again because I wanted to take pictures like, okay, let me remember the book cover and the picture of the item that I wanted to make because, and I, I don't know where you live, but the people in the, the district that I live in, the public library district, they don't um damage or destroy or unofficially permanently borrow patterns out of pattern books like all the books that I um borrowed still had the patterns intact some of them almost to the point where I don't even know if anyone had ever opened them <laughs> before because that's how crisp they were so if you too frequent the library please 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 don't destroy the patterns, you know, the books certainly, but the patterns as well so that others can enjoy them. Anyway, um, so the patterns were all in the book. So I took a picture of the cover, took a picture of the page or the, you know, the image in, um, inside the book, had it in my phone. And then, I don't know, my phone was low on memories or storage and so I'm trying to, you know, chunk out pictures and get more space to do YouTube videos. And I deleted the cover of the book. I still had the picture of the bag. I deleted the cover of the book. Duh. So I had to go and like re-borrow all of these books. I had no clue as to what book I had used. Anyway, I finally found the book. And um, I actually still have the book. And um, was able to go through and make all of the um, pieces. I do intend to purchase this book because there's a couple other things that I want to get out of it as well, but that's for another video. Okay, so at any rate, this is called The Weekend Bag. And when I saw the one in the book that was blue jean, it was like, yep, I want a blue jean or a denim 
bag. And so I did that. And so I think mine came out really, really good. The instructions were pretty simple to follow. I'd say if maybe not this as your very first pattern, if you've not sewn anything before, because of course it's just the written pattern there in the book. It doesn't have like a video or anything like that to go with it. And I would encourage anyone to find a pattern that has some type of video to go with it just so you can kind of stop, rewind, see hands and all that stuff. But this still is a very simple, simple bag to put together. So basically you have your front and back because it's the exact same piece um, as you know, on one side as it is the other. This bag is actually lined. So of course you'll be cutting those out four times. Now, quick story here, this fabric I have had for probably half my life. <laughs> when my sister went to one of her trips um, over to the continent of Africa, because I forget which country it was, she had brought back some fabric and uh, this was one of them. And I have held onto this fabric forever. Like, I don't know what I want to do with it. I had thought about, you know, making something crafty with it, but it was like, eh. So I just held on. But this year, finally, finally, I was able to utilize it. And I think it looks awesome inside of this bag. Um, so I did line it with some African fabric here on the inside. And so you have, you know, like I said, front and back cut twice for the outside and for the inside. And then you also have this nice size pocket here that you can... Um, add or not add. Now, one of the things it says to do is to stitch it down the middle so it actually becomes two. You can certainly do what you want with that. You can keep it as one whole pocket. You can make it into thirds if you wanted to. You can actually, of course, add it to the other side, which I didn't do it for this one, but you can add it to the other side of the bag and have two pockets, right? And then, you know, um, maybe have two on this side or make this one on the other side long. So there's some variety that you can do with it. You can actually take this pocket if you want it and put it on the outside as well. So there's a lot of things that you can do to make this bag your own. Because this was my first time out and some very special fabric, I didn't want to mess up because I did not do a muslin because this is a lot of material. <laughs> so, um, you know, you have your inside pocket. Then you have your... Um, your band that goes around the top of the bag. I'm showing you the inside, but it goes around the top of the bag. You really can't see that. So that's why I think it's better to show you this way. So there's some contrast. Um, so you just have that over and then you have two straps. And if you look at that, it's actually lined as well. So you're still getting that pop of color or contrast if you choose to do that. So there are no open seams anywhere in this bag. The one thing that I did modify was that, um, oh no, I didn't. <laughs> I was going to say the one thing that I did modify that I'm going to modify is that the strap is pretty wide. And so what I'm thinking about doing, and I left it that way just because I wanted to carry it a few times to see if I liked it that way. Because it's a wide strap, you know, you get some good um, real estate you know, on the shoulder as far as being able to hug the shoulder. And that's great. It's just um, if you're carrying it or when I'm carrying it in my hand, it seems to be just a little bit um, much. So what I'm thinking about doing is just taking the, the center of the straps, folding it over, and then like maybe two, one and a half, two to three inches, just um, stitching that close so that it's just a little skinnier. And in that way, as I'm holding it, it's already doubled over and it fits, you know, more flatly inside your hand. Now that does, of course, make it skinnier on the shoulder, but that's okay because again, like I said, it's pretty wide. So you still have some good width to kind of lay on your shoulder pretty nice. But as far as hand holding, I think that would, you know, just make it a bit more comfortable. So I may or may not do that. We'll see. I will be making this bag another time and another time and another time. That's how much I like it. 
I will say, I thought it was going to come up a little bigger, but I think this is still the perfect size. Like, I can't even get it in the camera that good. It's so big. It's perfect size. It says weekend bag. Of course, the picture looked like she was like at a market and buying some flowers. You can take it to your local farmer's market or nursery to pick up things. It could even be a diaper bag if you wanted to or going on a picnic, you know, just it has a lot of room in this bag. The only thing, of course, is that there aren't any closures to it. So, you know, as far as important items like keys and wallets and stuff like or credit cards you would want to have that in something a little more secure except for the pocket you can probably put the keys in the pocket um but like money and stuff like dollar bills stuff like that you know there's no way to actually close the bag so you know if a good breeze comes through you may lose some things but and i have no desire to put any zipper in this and buttons and things like that. I like it just the way it is. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to making more of these. I have some canvas material as well as um, some mud cloth type fabric. And so I'm interested in utilizing that for this bag as well and just having a variety of these where, you know, run into the store. Cause even going shopping, like I hate plastic grocery bags. so. At any time I can use my own bags, I will. And this would be a good one to, to do that. It's a fashion bag, of course, obviously for this, but you can make it in various different materials and be able to utilize it for more function versus fashion. So um, all in all, those were my four makes for the month. Again, I really enjoy all four of them. I would have to say this bag is my favorite. I like the way it turned out. Plus I was able to utilize some fabric um, that I had been holding on to for <laughs> When I say forever, I mean forever. And so those were my four makes. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these patterns, if you have any of these patterns. Um, you know, if one of the views on the envelope spoke to you more than the other, I certainly love to hear that. I appreciate all of you joining me today. I do have some other videos coming up here shortly as I get back into the swing of uh, filming videos and editing and posting them. So I appreciate your patience with me with that. So thanks so very much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Please consider like, subscribing, and commenting below. If you have any suggestions for items that I've talked about in this video or videos past, please feel free to leave those below. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.